Greetings, everyone, and thank you for your time. Our conversation today is about the challenges and opportunities in transforming the way suppliers to the automotive industry develop, manage, and execute their automotive programs. During this conversation, we shed some light on the forgotten team. Today's speakers include Jim Shepard, who's an independent consultant providing guidance in advanced manufacturing strategy and technology. He recently retired from Plex Systems, where he served as the Vice President of Corporate Strategy. Jim also previously served as Vice President and Distinguished Analyst for Gartner Inc., the world's leading information technology research company. Jim will be joined by Actify CEO, Dave Upsell. Dave is formerly VP of Corporate Development for Techsoft 3D and Managing Director of Sagemark LLC, a consultancy working with the technical software developers and users on sales, marketing, corporate development, and implementation strategies. He's also the founder and first executive director of the 3D PDF Consortium, which is an industry trade group responsible for advancing data interoperability standards for the manufacturing and AEC industries. At this point, I'd like to hand it over to Dave. Thanks, Sharice. Jim, good to see you today. I see you, Dave. Well, you and I have been working together for a little over a year now. And uh, the focus of that work that we've been doing is uh, understanding a lot of the challenges that automotive suppliers have in program management. And uh, one of the things we've talked about before that I think the audience might be interested in is, as, as Sharice had said, we've both been around for a while. And I think that we've both been surprised at the fact that you have this area that is such a critical function for the suppliers, and yet we don't find anybody having delivered a package solution that actually tries to solve the problem these folks are struggling with. And I think that was a bit of a revelation. Um, was it as a surprise for you uh, as it was for me? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I wouldn't have guessed there was any green space left in the uh, uh, in the manufacturing software world that you know that a group of vendors hadn't uh, hadn't landed on with uh, uh, with potential solutions. And and the more we dug into program management, the more we realized that while it's certainly surrounded by all the other categories, uh, no one had really addressed this one. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that we learned about why that situation, you know, is the way that it is and what it's going to take to actually transform the way that that part of the function of an automotive supplier actually works. And I think one of the things that we focused on is there's some pretty key differences in the way that uh, manufacturing works for an automotive supplier than you would find for manufacturers of a lot of other, you know, hard goods. So, you know, could you do a little bit and kind of contrast the way that those, you know, two experiences work? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's uh, all manufacturers or all manufacturing categories think they're unique, but uh, uh, this is actually one where uh, it's quite different in a with a conventional uh, uh, manufacturing company, they uh, they decide that they're going to develop a product. They uh, they engage product management and product marketing, and uh, you know the sales organization, and they interview customers. They go through all that to to figure out what the product ought to do, and then they go through a development process that's not just the design engineering development, but the manufacturing engineering, the tooling, uh, costing, uh, you know, routing, work instructions, uh, and so forth to, uh, to develop what that product is going to be and figure out how much is it going to cost to make and how, uh, how much we should charge for it and so forth. And during that whole development time, they aren't, you know, they may begin marketing, but they certainly aren't selling them. And, uh, and they haven't committed to price and delivery yet. And, uh, and all of that information is being entered as it's developed into the ERP system. So by the time they get to the point of releasing a product, they have this very complete set of information in the ERP system. That's conventional manufacturing. And, and that works quite well with the, uh, the typical enterprise systems that manufacturers use. So they have 
uh, uh, CAD systems for design. They, uh, they may have PLM systems for uh, more of the engineering process. And then they have these big ERP systems that handle uh, routings and bills of materials and all of the material and purchasing and so forth. Uh, in the automotive industry, it's quite different. If I'm a tier one auto supplier, I am making products uh, for a particular OEM. It's a specific product. Um, and I have to bid on it and commit to uh, a price and delivery um, and uh, for thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of that particular item um, based on a set of what really are preliminary designs that I get from the OEM. And, uh, and that information is absolutely not in the ERP system. It's not even in my CAD system. It's, you know, certainly not in PLM. It is in a set of files and folders and, uh, and information that comes to me from the OEM. I may have worked with them through uh, part of the uh, uh, preliminary design phase, but uh, but I'm right up there at the very beginning of the process, having to commit the company to price and delivery. And then I have what we refer to in automotive as the program phase, which goes from the point where I'm awarded the contract through sometime into full production. And it's often six to nine months of finalizing designs, developing uh, how are we going to manufacture it? Where are we going to manufacture it? What equipment do we need to buy? What tooling needs to be designed and developed? Um, all, you know, what quality specifications have to uh, uh, be developed? And all of that goes on in that program phase. Um, uh, and it's treated as a project. And so it's very different than a, uh, than a conventional discrete manufacturing company. It sounds like in that description that the typical discrete manufacturing company is in complete control of its destiny uh, in terms of the success or the relative success of bringing whatever product it is they're working on to the market. And yet for the automotive supplier, it's not that way at all, right? <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's a matter of, you know, the uh, the conventional manufacturer would say, the good news is I'm in control, but I have no guarantee that I'm ever going to sell one. Uh, the good news for the automotive uh, supplier is they know that they've got an order for 500,000 of these things. They just don't know if they're going to make any money on it. <laughs> well, for for folks that maybe don't know, how critical then in that phase, that six to nine months, how critical is program management to the ultimate success or failure of the program? Well, program management, which is typically a small team of very experienced engineers, um, really owns it from the point of award through, uh, as I say, the first two or three months of production. They own this whole thing. They are the primary liaison to the customer, constantly answering customers' questions, requesting more information, dealing with changes. Uh, they are the ones organizing their own internal organization to uh, figure out what are the production steps, what equipment do we need, uh, work with the tooling department, work with the procurement department to get the material ordered. They manage that whole thing and they are responsible for uh, not just coordinating all of those parts of the organization that have to be involved, but also providing management and the customer with an almost continuous update on what's the status of this project. And so how are they doing this today? I mean, if it's that critical, how are they doing it today? Well, that's the remarkable thing. You know, as we dug into how are they doing it today, I mean, we talked to some of the largest and most sophisticated manufacturing companies on earth who are key auto suppliers and, and they are really good at what they do. And when you dig into what are the tools that the program managers are using to do this, it is always spreadsheets. Uh, some of the most 
elaborate uh, spreadsheets I've ever seen and, you know, just massive things that they have developed themselves uh, to try and keep track of these uh, projects and all the steps in them and so forth. Um, a lot of file folders because they have all of the data that comes in from the customer, uh, which is you know, in flux from day one, there are lots of changes. It, you know, those, that information, some of it is uh, our CAD files and, uh, and other, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, technical image detail. Some of it are text files, some of it's spreadsheets. I mean, they get massive amounts of this stuff from the customer's engineering department, but there's also lots of other information that gets generated in this phase. So uh, they have to, they are the ones responsible for adhering to AQ, APQP and PPAP uh, requirements and the customers hold them to that. So they have to generate uh, all of the feasibility studies, all of the quality documents, et cetera, you know, all of that stuff has to be managed. They do it with file folders today. And then the coordination, um, mostly internal, but sometimes external as well, is typically done through emails and messaging systems. So it is a, you know, it's, it's really remarkably primitive when you think about information systems in uh, 2021. Yeah, and these days you would think so. Well, what what kind of problems have some of the folks that we've talked to shared about? Uh, you know, what what having to do it this way actually means for them on a day to day basis. What well, of first of all, it 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 just eats up a huge amount of time. And, you know, creating one of these spreadsheets and project uh, um, templates for each new order that comes in uh, is, is enormously time uh, consuming. Uh, communicating all of the tasks to the various parts of the organization that need it. Uh, organizing the data and keeping track of what's the current version and making sure that the, you know, the tooling department has the latest version of the uh, CAD files that they need, that procurement has the latest versions of the specifications that they need, et cetera. Um, and so all of that gets done with an engineer at a keyboard. Um, there's, you know, huge potential for somebody miskeying the information or forgetting to make an update. And, uh, and obviously it makes it much more difficult to keep track of the status of all of those steps because all that is done kind of semi-manually. And then there's the problem of because this information isn't in a database, I have no useful way to go back and look at it, to review it during the program, uh, certainly to review it after the program is over and be able to compare programs to prior ones or when a new opportunity comes in to be able to look at the last four times we made something similar to that. None of that really exists for them. So they don't have any way of collecting history and being able to leverage that history and the lessons learned in any sort of um, uh, uh, fluid way. It's right. I mean, I, I, I'm sure they keep everything, <laughs> but, but as we all know, that's not necessarily the most useful thing. So they have all the detailed records, but they don't really have any way to go back and analyze it and uh, apply any intelligence to the information. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that's been really surprising to me about about this discovery that we're talking about is the fact that you would think, uh, as you said, that in this day and age in 2021, that there would be technology that could be used you know, to solve this. But yet you don't see people trying to address this problem successfully by taking an existing application that might be great at you know, the operations in a particular functional silo throughout the company. But we don't see that happening. You know, do you have any thoughts about why not? Well, I, you know, I think part of the problem is that, you know, these are um, 
in some respects, conventional manufacturers. So all of their systems are kind of part and assembly oriented, whether it's the PLM system or the CAD system or the ERP system, the procurement system, the costing systems, et cetera, are all based on part numbers, uh, part numbers and assembly numbers and so forth. And, uh, and yet this piece of activity is project-based. And so it's this orthogonal view that none of those applications really satisfy. So during this phase, they, you know, they don't have all this information in that ERP database. It's floating out there and they have to track this thing on a, on, you know, kind of a very specialized project basis where they have specific tasks and task assignments and uh, and phase gates and so forth. They aren't a, a project-based business like an aerospace vendor or a shipbuilder, uh, but it is just in this phase where they need this kind of view and control and they just don't have it. So if you were to describe a way uh, that you would envision I mean, you've worked with some of the biggest manufacturers in the world over the years. What is it that, you know, the manufacturers need if they're going to transform program management enough to be able to generate quotes that they have a higher degree of confidence in, to be able to have better visibility, you know, be able to uh, eliminate a lot of this manual work that you've been describing and to be able to, you know, uh, have a more productive relationship with their customer. What does it take? What is it going to take to be able to do that? Yeah, I think what they need is a uh, um, a database rather than a file management system that allows them to store data and uh, uh, you know link it to source systems, link it to other systems that need that information automatically, so it doesn't have to be rekeyed. Uh, uh, I think they need uh, a, you know a special purpose. Uh, project management capability that, you know, where they can establish templates for how they work, what the steps are that they go through, how they manage these things, and, and have them personalized to the particular OEM, because Ford has different requirements than Honda, than Toyota, than Tesla, and so they need to have templates that are OEM uh, specific and uh, that they can, you know, automatically bring one up when they get a new piece of work and populate it with the information that comes from, uh, uh, from the customer and immediately begin uh, communicating that out to the rest of the organization and assigning tasks to individuals or departments with due dates and, uh, and so forth. And then, of course, to have that visibility, you know, at a high level in kind of a dashboard form and in a detail level where I can drill down. And, uh, and uh, it's very common in these companies that they have a meeting every day yeah. to, uh, to discuss the status of all the programs running. And they may have dozens or hundreds of programs running. And so, you know, just to be able to automate that view that visualization so that senior management can get a view of what's the status of the program and program managers can say what tasks are in trouble where are we behind uh, so that you know so that they know where to focus their efforts that's what's needed do you think that uh, for the average supplier this works uh, as an on-premise solution we haven't talked about that or do you think that the cloud has a role to play here yeah, I think, you know, uh, really, if you're looking, you know, if you're talking about any new solution today, um, there's very, very rarely a case where you could say, gee, this makes sense as a as an on-premise solution. <laughs> I, you know, I think that's just an outdated way to think yeah. about enterprise software. But yeah, particularly in this case, you've got a situation where uh, the customer and the supplier and their suppliers and their employees are all widely distributed. You know, an average tier one supplier may have plants in 25 countries. Uh, 
uh, you know, different time zones, and they may have to be coordinating production across those plants or sharing information across those plants. And of course, with COVID, we now have, even in the auto industry, a relatively high percentage of employees who are no longer working from the office. Uh, they are working from home. And so cloud is a much better fit for that business model. Um, and as we move forward, there's, you know, some people will go back to the office, there's no question, but a lot more people will not. And you know, it is the nature of this business that uh, uh, program managers and uh, procurement people and tooling engineers and uh, production engineers and so forth um, are often on the road. They need a system, you know, that they can get at where, you know, if they're in a, uh, an airport lounge or, uh, or on a customer's conference room or where they need access to the system in real time, wherever they are. And cloud just does an infinitely better job of that. Yeah. Well, I have one last question for you today. And I think it's a good one considering uh, uh, what, you, uh, what you just uh, shared with us. And that is, if I'm an automotive supplier today, okay, if I don't do this, can you say anything about what you think the future looks like? Um, yeah, I mean, this becomes a competitive liability for them. I mean, the reality is we are seeing shorter programs and more of them, uh, faster turnaround times, particularly as we add more and more OEMs and electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles and so forth. The, uh, we are going to see a dramatic increase in the number of programs. We're already seeing it. And so this is, this problem is just going to get worse. And, uh, uh, and OEMs are going to pick suppliers, not just on their technical capabilities, but how well are they able to manage this stuff? How well are they able to answer my question when I ask, What's the status of this? Is the tool for this done? Where is that uh, FMEA or uh, or that you know quality technical sheet? You know they expect an answer instantly, and and it's always been the case in the auto industry that the the OEM just puts those expectations on their suppliers and. If you can meet the expectation, you win the business and uh, and you do very well. If you can't meet the expectation, they find somebody else. Well, that's a pretty clear statement. So Jim, thanks for joining me today. Uh, and I, I hope that uh, uh, this has been as interesting for the audience as it's been for me. So, Great, I've really enjoyed it. All right, have a good rest of your day. Thanks. thanks. Thank you all for your time. We hope you've enjoyed this provocative discussion about why program management is the forgotten team and what needs to happen in order to affect positive change in their world. For information on how Actify is transforming automotive program management, please visit go.actify.com forward slash pro step or contact us directly at sales at actify.com or sales here up at actify.com. Again, thank you for your time.